So what we're tying today is the Antron Caddis. Um, this is a fly that we've really picked up through a lot of our international competition fishing. It's a very robust fly um, and again it's easy to tie and you can catch multiple fish on the same fly. So it's really, I suppose, ticks off a lot of boxes from being a very functional fly. Now we're going to start off with 8O grey hook, or grey thread should I say. And you'll notice here that I'm using a 2 or a 2-4 double nine SP Teamco hook. This is one fly that I'm very particular about uh, the hook uh, and the reason being is um, these particular hooks I found hold very well in a river situation and particularly when you want to pull a fish upstream and often we'll fish this fly, fly downstream or we'll skitter with it and I found that by using this style of hook, the 2499, you actually put about 10% more fish in the net. So it's one I am quite particular about. Now we're using just a fine rabbit um, dubbing here. It's sort of, I suppose you call it a, a, lot, a slightly darker grey. Uh, but I like fine dubbings for these because we do put on a fairly tight body. So we just dub that on and then we'll tie in the body. And the body's actually only going to come up about 50% of the length of the hook because this is a fly where if you're not careful, you can actually crowd out the head. So, say, so quite a small bit of dubbing in that. Then we're going to put in the underwing, and in this case I'm using um, Antron. And look, you can use different colours, greys or tans. Sorry, light greys, tans, or in this case it's cream. Um, they all work okay depending on the colour of the caddis you want to imitate. So we just tie in the underwing there. And this is another important part. If we were to cut this off straight up, when it springs up you'll find that it all slopes back. So we actually cut the underwing at quite an extreme angle, like that. And you'll see that gives us that sort of tent sort of uh, shape as it goes backwards over the top. Then we get to our overwing. In this case I'm using a fine deer hair, but equally uh, elk hair is very good as well. But you've got, if you're using deer hair, you've got to make sure it's very fine, because if it's a coarse one, it will spring out too much. The type that's favoured when you're spinning deer hair, we don't want that in this situation. We want a very fine one. So we cut out a chunk of that. Alright, and then stroke out any of the soft fibres, there's not much in this particular piece of hair. I've got a little bit too much there so I'll take a bit out. Now sometimes you may have to stack this depending on your hair. Some hairs are very even and uniform in length, others need stacking. This particular one actually doesn't need stacking, it's pretty good straight off the, um, off the skin. So we lay that on top with the points extending just beyond the underwing. And the trick when you're using deer hair is not to play with a lot. You're very decisive with your movements. So you lash that down. And the trick is I do not take my hand off the deer hair now until I've finished cutting off all of these fibres. Because otherwise it will spring all over the place and make the job quite difficult. It's sometimes a fiddly job, this part of it anyway. And you've got to be careful that you don't cut your thread while we're cleaning up the head here. And you can see there, we're already in a little bit tight on the eye of the hook, so it, it is very easy to crowd out this hook, the eye of this hook. That's it. Now we can sort of just push that back, just a little bit, tighten it up so we've got the hook exposed there. We'll get to those last little bits and pieces later. Now we put an, another bit of dubbing for the head. Now equally, you'll see how it's springing up a bit. As we put on this dubbing, we can use the application of the dubbing to push those that overwing down a little bit. So again, a little bit of that rabbit dubbing. Again, a little bit goes a long way in this situation, as it does in all flies. Spin that on again quite tightly. I'll pull that back. 
and I'll wind that on and you'll see I'll just go backwards over that upper wing a little bit and you see how it pushes it back a little bit, keeps it all in control and then coming forward and finishing off the head. I don't use any um, any head cement on this, just some uh, some wax to help lock in the thread. Three turns. A few turns. And that's the Antron Caddis. Uh, now when you get to fish that, all I do is I, I stroke in some, um, some floatant initially, uh, and thereafter I just treat it with dry fly shake. And you can catch literally, you know, 20 or 30 fish on that same fly. Very robust fly um, and in the directions on fishing it of course it's equally good upstream, downstream, skittered, a very versatile fly. The Antron Caddis. This film is proudly brought to you by the Fly Fisher in Melbourne and the flyfisheronline.com where you'll find everything to tie the Antron Caddis and a whole lot more.